Hey angels, it's Casey and welcome back to my channel. So today we have a fun video. We are going to be doing a full face of the world's most controversial makeup brands. Hmm. So I have a few makeup products sitting in front of me that I want to talk to you guys about and this is really unlike me because I am a Libra and if you guys know anything about Libras, one, we're very indecisive so um, I know you guys are going to expect me to explain to you guys how I feel about certain brands but the problem is I'm always kind of on the fence about certain things. Also, we are known to not really take sides so it's just kind of like, uh, we, like we, we don't like controversy. You you know what I'm saying? We just like, I don't, I don't want that problem. I don't need that beef in my life. It's just, it's a little weird for me to be doing this, but I felt like it was something that needs to be done because the beauty community, unfortunately, ironically, is a very ugly place, okay? So there's always some type of drama going on. There's always some type of issues happening. And I wanted to talk about it on my channel specifically, not to bash any of these brands. I would say about 80% of the products in front of me I purchased with my own money way before the thought of this video because I genuinely wanted the products. But I just kind of want to open this dialogue up. At what point do we stop supporting a brand? Is it the founder of it? Is it maybe some type of promotional like video or photo that they've done? What makes you stop, you know, wanting to support a brand, stop spending your coins on this brand? I really want you guys to engage in this video, comment. If you guys are going to participate in engaging in this video, I ask that you respect everyone's like thoughts and how they feel about something in the comments. Please don't attack someone in the comments because they choose to support or not support someone for whatever reason. We can agree to disagree as long as we keep it very you know respectable so is respectable a word <laughs> i don't know go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already like this video if you like it and share it if you want to have this conversation with maybe your friends on facebook or instagram i just really want to hear what you guys have to say and what brands you guys support and what brands you don't support i mean it kind of also helps me as well like see what products i should be showing on my channel and like i said i'll get deeper into it in the video but there was a lot of you know products that I would purchase and use off camera but wouldn't use them on camera because I know a lot of my viewers so happen to not support them <laughs> Jeffree Star so yes let's go ahead and get started on this interesting video okay so my eyes are primed so we're gonna do eyeshadow first and I do have my little um, note in my phone that is going to help me throughout this video so for the first product for eyeshadow we are going to need to talk about the king of this whole video okay because his name is in every little bit of drama you could possibly think of. He seems to be the center of most drama. And I am talking about none other than Mr. or Mrs. Jeffree Star. So let's go ahead and start putting some shadow on and let's talk a little bit about Jeffree Star, shall we? So I have two of his palettes here. I have the Beauty Killer palette, which was his first palette, and then I have the Androgyny palette. Now I wanna say I absolutely love Jeffree Star products and at this point I probably lost 50 subscribers. I think they are really great, they're amazing, pigmented, and just the formulation of his products I think are absolutely phenomenal and I used to be a huge Jeffree Star fan like a diehard Jeffree Star fan I actually uh, found Jeffree Star when he was still doing music I found him through that Nicki Minaj and Jeffree Star song and so this was during the MySpace days and then I've always I just always loved him I got a chance to meet him I took pictures with him I would buy all his products when they launched so I was a really big Jeffree Star fan. I think one of the main things that makes Jeffree Star so controversial is that he seems to be in the center of all beef. He's had beef with a lot of people, Kylie Jenner, Jackie Ina, Makeup Shayla, Kat Von D, which he used to be best friends with, Jared, which is the founder of Too Faced. That's just to name a few. And I think the reason for him always getting into the this you know beef is because for one is I think he you know he goes really hard for his brand as you should anybody with a brand knows that you know I'm gonna support it to the day I die this is my baby this is how I make my coin this is how I feed my family but I think it gets to a point where it's just like okay you're not 
defending it in a professional manner. There's that. And then on top of that, we all know the huge issue is a lot of people seem to believe that he is a racist because of the fact that there's these videos that surface that people took it as he was saying that he was gonna throw battery acid on a black woman's face to make her lighter. Now, I didn't really watch those videos, but I was just kind of like, all right, I'm going to continue to use my Jeffree Star products. And this is the one of the brands I was talking about where I said, um, you know, I use things off camera, but I don't put them on camera because I know a lot of my supporters do not. They don't care to see him. They don't want to know about his products. They don't want to see a black woman, you know, using his products. But hey, sis already has spent her money and I'm not just going to throw it out. I'm sorry. Let's be real, I'm not gonna throw it away. But anyway, recently, Shane Dawson, which is like a huge YouTuber, did like this five part series documentary on Jeffree Star where Jeffree then explained the situation. And I'm going to say this, and like I said, respect everyone's you know opinions and how they feel. I don't think Jeffree Star is a racist. And I say this because after watching the video, one, the situation with the whole battery acid on the woman's face, he was talking to his friend that was portraying to be a ghetto woman. Did the guy ever say that this ghetto woman he was pretending to be was black? No. There's so, like every race in the world can be ghetto. Trust me, I've met them. I live in New York. Like every race in the entire world can be ghetto. I think that's an insecurity on our part is that we see someone at ghetto and then we automatically assume that they're trying to portray a black woman. And it's just like, I don't know. To me, it's just like, okay, he didn't say he was, you know, being a black woman. He didn't say anything about race at all. He was just acting ratchet. He didn't even have a ghetto name. If, if he has some type of name that's more popular amongst the black community, then I would say like, okay, yeah, he's trying to pretend to be a black woman. And the whole battery acid part was Jeffree Star saying that her foundation didn't match, so he wanted to throw battery acid on her to make the foundation match. That could have meant the foundation was too art. That could have meant so many things. I don't know. Just to me, in my opinion, I just don't think that he's a racist. Um, and a lot of people feel that he's also racist because of the fact that he had beef with Jackie Ina and make up Shayla. But like I said before, he has had beef with so many people. So I just feel like, okay, just because if, okay, put it like this. If I've had a fight with five, six black women and then I go have a fight with three white women. Does that mean I'm racist? Does, does that mean I'm racist against white people? No. That just means I'm probably an asshole. Let's just be real. That's, that's, that's probably something wrong with me. Like I can't shut my mouth or I'm fake and I talk about people or something like that. But that does not mean I'm a racist. And I also feel like people saying that, oh, he called Jackie Ina a rat. A rat is not a racial slur. If he would have called her the N-word, then guys, I would have been all with it. Like, I, I totally would feel you on that, but he just did it. So I don't know. I just don't think that he's a racist. This probably would be the only time you guys see his products on my channel, but like I said, I will not be throwing his products away. So you guys leave your comments down below. I'll probably leave a poll. Do you feel that Jeffree Star is racist? Do you feel that he's changing? How do you guys feel about that? The next controversial makeup brand that we will be talking about is Kat Von D and I just felt like it was just right to use Kat Von D directly after Jeffree Star after all that they've been through. So I have the uh, tattoo liner here. I've never used this before. I literally just brought this for the video. We're going to be winging this out. If you don't know who Kat Von D is, she is a, this is trash cat. What is this? There's just a few things that people just don't like about her. Personally, for me, I don't care. Like, you know, I have I have about, um, now three Kat Von D products. They're okay. They're not a brand that I stand for, um, but a lot of people seem to really love her and her brand. What makes Kat Von D's brand controversial? I don't really know if it's much about the brand, but more so about the founder. I, I think most people don't support Kat Von D's brand because of Kat Von D herself, not because the products aren't good or anything like that. Besides the fact that she's had beef with Jeffree Star, a lot of people don't support her because one, she had a product called Underage and people felt like the name of that was just 100% 
inappropriate. Another thing that people didn't like about Kat Von D was the fact that she actually had a contest, some type of contest, I don't know, girl. They actually selected a Trump supporter as the winner, so a lot of people didn't like that. So the latest drama with Kat Von D, besides the, you know, Jeffrey beef and the underage lipstick name, it was the fact that she made a post that she's choosing not to vaccinate her child, and a lot of people were highly upset about that, and you know, they considered Kat Von D canceled. She feels that it does more harm than good, and there's obviously hundreds of thousands and people who happen to disagree with her. I'm gonna be returning this eyeliner. I don't like it. But anyway, I don't really hate, I don't hate Kat Von D. I don't love her either. I don't stand for her. I'm just like, whatever about her. Do you guys like stop supporting a brand because of what they name their products? Do you stop supporting a brand because of their religious or political or what they choose to do with their children, like their views on those things? Like. Is, are any of the reasons that people are saying Kat Von D is controversial or, you know, is canceled? Are those any of the reasons that you would, you know, cancel Kat? I'm gonna go ahead and move to face where we have a lot more products to talk about. And for a primer and foundation, we're going to be using the same brand that I did get some comments that people felt that they were, you know, part of this controversy. That is going to be Too Faced. Now I'm just gonna flat out say it right now. I support Too Faced, I like Too Faced products. I'm going to continue to use Too Faced, so I'm just gonna put that out there because I know you guys are probably gonna ask me, well how do I feel about it? I do like Too Faced. I'm gonna use the Hangover RX Primer. If you guys are wondering why Too Faced is included in this video, it's mainly because the founder, Jared, seems to be um, and a few little beefs here and there. One of the main things was his beef with, started off with Tart and then kind of spiraled into Jeffree Star. And Jared made like a comment when Tart came out with a unicorn collection saying that there's no unicorns in the Amazon or something like that, something some along those lines. Now a lot of people thought that was stupid cause like let's be real, Too Faced did not create unicorns. And a brand, if they wanna use unicorns cause it's on trends then whatever, use unicorns. So a lot of people did not like or respect that and one of the main people being Jeffree Star which started a whole beef and his, like Jared's sister was saying nasty things so a lot a lot of people just felt like that wasn't professional and they did not want to support Too Faced after that. Throughout this beef, there was like some things that came to the light of Too Faced not paying Nikki tutorials, enough money for her palette. She finally came out not that long ago with a video basically saying it had nothing to do with the money. Yes, she was young and dumb and didn't negotiate what she should have, but you know, she learned her lesson. It was a negotiation. It wasn't a surprise when she was paid, she agreed upon that. What the problem was, Too Faced did some shady things behind her back as far as the formulation of her palette. Um, she did not know that it was not going to be good basically and so she does not support Too Faced. When you're somebody as big as Nikki Tutorials and Jeffree Star, you have die hard fans. You know what I mean? And with that being said, let's say I have 5 million subscribers and I came out um, and said that a brand that I once collaborated with did me real dirty. Some of them diehard fans are gonna choose to cancel that brand. They're gonna be like, well, I'm not supporting them because they did you that way. Did they screw over Nikki Tutorials? Probably, there's three sides to every story. There's your side, their side, and the truth. So I wasn't there, I don't know nothing that happened. I continue to support Too Faced, so that's just how I feel about it. So now that we have our foundation on, it's time for some drama in the concealer world. And we have Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. Now, one, I don't really care for this concealer, but I like to use it as an eye primer, which is the reason why I've never like taken it back. But this is like a holy grail concealer for a lot of people. And because of that, Tarte then, you know, decided to launch a shape tape foundation. And this is where it gets like, I don't know if I should support you anymore. The problem with Tar is, what makes them so controversial is the fact that they launched a foundation with the world's worst 
shade range of all time. It was not inclusive at all. It did not represent people that were really, really fair. And it definitely did not represent anyone with a deeper complexion. It was actually quite embarrassing, their shade range. A lot of beauty bloggers decided to then cancel them, which I don't blame them. Um, because it's like you use me to promote your brand, to make you money. But then you don't even think of me when you're making a foundation. That's wrong. That's wrong. And I could see why Shayla, you know, and all these people don't want to support um, Tarte anymore. What really ticks me off about the whole foundation thing wasn't just the fact that it wasn't inclusive because let's be real i think we're all kind of used to it by now we're all like it doesn't surprise us anymore when a brand doesn't include us i feel like it's more surprising when a brand does include us which is so sad to say but it's the truth what really pissed me off was that instead of just giving a real like apology and say like we were wrong um we will fix this we will stop the launch and you know make this better for everyone and make it more inclusive no matter how long it takes no matter the money whatever they decided i think it was supposed to drop like during the was it like the winter or something like that it was during some season i guess it was the winter and their reasoning for the shade range was because we tend to be lighter during the colder months what the hell does that mean? I have never ever in my life been lighter than an NC44, okay? I've never been an NC25. I don't know no black woman that's an NW55 that been an NC30 just because it is December. That makes absolutely no sense. Do we get lighter in the winter? Absolutely. Do we get darker in the summer? Absolutely. However, it is not a drastic change where you can make one shade for a black woman and say, well, you'll fit the other ones in the colder months that is a poor ass excuse okay and i didn't forget y'all you see what i'm blending this makeup out with a beauty blender and i definitely did that on purpose because beauty blender has been on the whole controversy list as well and if you don't know why it's because beauty blender launched a foundation called bounce you know i've watched reviews and it apparently is a fantastic formulation however once again similar to tarte the shade range was terrible it was a whole lot of medium shades and not enough darker shades at all the founder of beauty blender is latina and that makes me excited to know i didn't even know that until all this happened if you guys don't know i am puerto rican I am, well, my mom's side is all Puerto Rican. Um, my dad's side is like Cuban and Bayesian or whatever. So I am an Afro-Latina. Yes, I'm black, but you know, I am Hispanic at the same time. Her reasoning for the fact that there were so many middle shades and not enough darker shades or any other shade was because she was trying to target the latin community i guess you can say because we could never find our foundation now my issue with that is that if i posted photos of my family members and friends that is hispanic or however you want to say it in this video you will see them range from the lightest shade possible to the darkest shade possible i have people in my family they are dark in complexion like super dark i have friends that is exactly what i am that is like 30 shades lighter than me so it's like for you to say that you are just targeting the you know the, the hispanic community it doesn't make sense because we're literally like a complexion rainbow to me that was just a poor excuse because it's like what about my puerto rican cousin who is like a nw45 or my puerto rican friend that is nc15 like it just doesn't make sense to me and it's like what about me who is puerto rican and cuban who can't even wear your foundation like it's just does it make sense at all i think they just need to take responsibility for their actions now am i still going to support beauty blender i'm going to still support the beauty blenders that i have <laughs> I ain't throwing these away. This is twenty dollars a pop, and I got like fifty of them. Okay, this is expensive. I'm still gonna use my beauty blenders. Absolutely. Will I be buying any new beauty blenders? No, because I found a sponge that I like more. That is fourteen dollars cheaper, and so I'm just going to use those. The next product, Huda 
beauty so i felt like what when i was like placing okay i'm gonna use this brand for this thing and this thing and things i was like what other product to use from huda than the easy bake powder which definitely gave huda a lot a lot a lot of attention she has like a quadrillion followers on social media now the reason why um huda is controversial one a lot of people feel like she does not support the black or lgbt community on her instagram page some people said it could be because of her religion because I think she's from Dubai or something like that. So it could be because of that, I don't know. And then the reason why I specifically wanted to use the Easy Bake Powder for this video is because allegedly she had stole the concept for the promotional photos of this powder from the indie brand Beauty Bakery. And basically like the photos was pretty much identical. Like it could have been, if I didn't know better, if, if I showed the two photos to like, to a guy who knows nothing about makeup or to a girl who knows nothing about makeup and I would be like, is this the same brand? They would probably say absolutely. Like this is the same brand. It's just a black woman showing her powder and like a uh, Middle Eastern or whatever you want to say woman showing her powder and when she was called out by it by Jackie Ina as well as uh, Jeffree Star she didn't admit to getting any inspiration from them she just did this long video um, showing where she got her inspiration from but it had nothing to do with Beauty Bakery and a lot of people felt like that was messed up so still not only from a black owned brand but a black owned indie brand I don't know for a fact if she stole it or not Call me naive, I don't know. I feel like the only person who would know is her and her team, right? That's really what it boils down to. Could she have never seen it before? Maybe, I don't know. Do I think she probably seen it? I, I do, I do think she's seen it before, but I can't say for sure she saw it, she stole it. Like, I cannot do that. Okay guys, and I'm back. I finished baking and I took that powder off. We added some lashes and pretty much finished the eyes because there's nothing else to talk about with eyes. The crazy thing about it is that this Huda Beauty powder is actually really nice. Mm. I want to move on to bronzing contouring and for that the brand that I will be talking about that is also pretty controversial I keep saying that throughout the video clearly that's what the whole video is about is going to be Morphe and I love Morphe I use Morphe in every single video this is a really nice like bronzer palette I'm gonna be playing with these darker shades and just bronzing up my face so you guys are like why is morphe controversial so i've just noticed a lot of people are just not too fond of morphe right now because they don't support you know jeffree star or manny mua laura lee morphe are huge fans of these people they sell their products in their store every time they have a meet and greet they have one of them there so a lot of people are just like man i'm not supporting morphe because y'all support these people now, I don't mind Manny Laura Lee, however, and I know how I said, you know, there's always three sides to the story, but this story right here is just plain black and white. She made the tweet. If you guys have not seen it, she basically said, quick tip for black people, if you pull up your pants, you can run from the police faster. And I don't care if that was six years ago. I don't take that lightly. I have a black boyfriend. I have a black father. I have a black brother. I have, well, two black brothers. I have black cousins. I have a lot of black males that are in my life that mean a lot to me. And and to sit here and watch these black men be killed by police every single day. I do not take a joke like that lightly. So I don't care how many years ago it was, Laura Lee is canceled. She's not in this video. I wouldn't even waste my coin just to make a video, you know, talking about her to return it back. Like, I, I just won't. So that's where I stand with that. However... <laughs> I still really do like Morphe so I can see why a lot of people don't want to support them and also a lot of people just find you know their collaborations with Jaclyn Hill like scandalous in type of way I don't know they just talk about it being manufactured in China and how Jaclyn Hill said they took you know they're going to reformulate the vault and it only took two weeks for them to you know fix it up i don't really know how i feel about that type of stuff you know it does sound funny to completely 
redo the vault in a two week time span that does sound a little funny to me but i've never made cosmetics and i don't know the truth of how long these things take to make so i can't sit here and say that was bs and i genuinely really do like morphe products so like i said i'm going to continue to support them but i can see how they can be a, a bit controversial and why a few people don't like them and don't want to support them this contour is controversial now for blush we're going back to tarte for highlighter, the brand we're going to be talking about was definitely in some deep, deep doo-doo <laughs> a long time ago. I don't feel like anybody's talking about them anymore, but that is going to be Lime Crime. So the problem with Lime Crime was that a lot of people did not support them after their like website got hacked or something like that. Thousands of dollars were stolen from customers um, out of their banking account. Whenever, if they ordered from Lime Crime between a certain time period, it was like October to something. I don't remember what the months were but if you you like ordered from them your information pretty much got stolen and apparently lime crime kept quiet about it until it kind of blew up in their face so a lot of people canceled them and i could 100 percent see why somebody would choose to cancel them after they've had money that they use for food and transportation and bills and everything like that stolen out their account and they weren't informed of it really not too sure what happened after that i really hope that everyone did get their money back i'm sure that they did but yes that is the reason why lime crime is so controversial as well as their former ceo doe deer i heard she did step down but a lot of people claim that she was not a nice person that she was racist i don't know i don't know how i feel about that i really do like lime crime's products and i do still buy their products i'm going to be honest with you guys there was just not enough for me to be like i'm never buying lime crime again however i don't order from their website i wait till their products are in urban outfitters if i want something before i match or I save up a couple of coins and then make a list of the things I want and I purchase them at IMAX just to be safe because I don't want it to happen again. We're gearing to the end of this video. This is a long one and if you stuck around, thank you guys so much. I'm going to go ahead and line my lips. For lipstick, the controversial brand I will be talking about is Kylie Cosmetics and this kind of ties into kkw as well or all kardashian jenner makeup brands i'm sorry guys i could not apply that and talk about why i added them into this video at the same time so the reason why they are added into this video is because it's no secret that people out of love and adore the kardashian and jenner clan or they hate them with a passion i am in the middle once again being my libra self the problem with them is that a lot of people feel as if they steal from the black culture hairstyles and trends and just things like that they steal from the black culture without giving credit to the black culture and they turn it into their own as if they created it themselves as well as the fact that they are all married to or have children with black men however with the billions of people who watch and love them they do not speak up and use their platform to talk about the issues that these black men go through such as police brutality and you know things of that nature a lot of people just feel like you're going to you want to be black until it's time to actually be black and i understand wholeheartedly what they mean and how they feel about that the reason why the brand itself is controversial is just because the founders and ceo are and they don't and people just don't want to support the brand they don't want to support them so i totally get it i don't think it's their products i've watched a lot of reviews even when i don't plan on buying their products i still watch the reviews and a lot of people like their products and they think it's good and yes there is some hiccups like there is with every brand in the world for the most people a lot of people like their product founders and CEOs just kind of get in the way of people wanting to support the brand now I have a one last brand and this is just to top it off and somebody asked me to add this in and that is YSL which I am just going to place this on top 
It's just a lip. This is all I had that was YSL and sweetie, I was not buying a YSL product for this video. Now the problem with YSL, and I think this kind of ties into all the really high luxury beauty brands that they just don't think about us black women. And I don't know if they just feel that we do not have the finances to purchase their products. I don't know what the reasoning is, but there is a foundation that I think they are launching, which makeup Shayla did swatch and the shade range is just so terrible and it's just like when are you guys gonna learn that we got money okay we can shop all right love makeup just like the next person we need to be included into your foundation ranges if you're going to launch foundation this goes from drugstore to the most expensive luxurious brand known to man if you're going to launch foundations or concealers or powders or anything in that nature, it should be inclusive. That is it. So that is my full face of controversial brands. I know this video is about to be hella long, y'all. It's about to be so long. But if you stuck it through, please give it a thumbs up. I appreciate you so much. And don't forget to subscribe. And let's open this conversation. At what point do you stop promoting or supporting a brand? What makes you tick? What makes you say, forget this, I would never purchase this brand again? Will you throw out the products that you previously had? Would you keep on using them? If 95% of my viewers say they don't want to see something and I'm not going to show it, there's no point. So that's what makes me not want to show a brand. So interested and nervous to see where these comments go but i was also really excited and geeked to film it at the same time subscribe to this channel leave comments down below i love you so much angels and i will see you in the next one bye